We're at the beginning of February, which means that CES already happened and Micro Center was there. One of the coolest things we got to see at CES 2025 was the Creality 3D printing booth featuring the all new K2 Plus with multi-color functionality. We've got it here in the Maker Lab at Micro Center and we're gonna take a look at it today. Let's go. I wanna talk about what makes this printer interesting. There have been multicolor printers out now for a while, including things that even go back to using the old mosaic unit that would sit on the side and enter up to, I think, eight different colors. Um, but with the advent of Bamboo and their AMS system and Anycubic also coming out with options, Creality is here with theirs. And this is a big, big option. And in terms of why it's big, it's not only because of the size, but you've also got the speed, you've got a heated chamber, you've got a CFS, the filament management system. With all of that being said, I think it's really worth taking a look at the K2 Plus. You can buy the K2 Plus by itself, or you can buy it as the combo with the CFS. So the cool thing about this CFS similar to the bamboo is that you can link up up to four CFSs together, giving you the option to have 16 colors in a single print. Now, remember, anytime you increase the number of colors and anytime you increase the number of changes in a print, it's going to add a little bit of time, a little bit of time, a lot of bit of time. It depends on the model. So be smart with your color changes. The fact that on this Creality machine here, you can have up to 16 different colors is just awesome. With the 4.3 inch color touchscreen, you're able to manage the different filaments very easily. Getting in and tapping on it and choosing whether it's a Creality filament or a generic filament, whether it's PLA, PETG, or even glow in the dark filament is very easy with this screen. When you hook up multiple of the CFS, you're able to monitor and change all of the filament right from that screen. It will label them based on the machine that it's in, giving them different number and letter combinations. The unit itself weighs around 35 kilograms. That's about 35 spools of filament, plus or minus a little bit there. So it's heavy. You definitely wanna have a friend with you or another person while you're unpacking. The unboxing process was pretty straightforward. Uh, we removed the box, we removed all the parts. We did some disassembly of some structures that were meant to keep it nice in transit. We pulled out the CFS unit from inside. You also get this really cool toolkit, which includes your standard side cutters, but also some other really cool tools that you don't always get in a 3D printer. Unfortunately, we don't sell Creality filament at the store, so make sure to buy inland filament. So because this is a multicolor printer, we need to do something every time that the color changes to make sure it's a clean color change. And that's often referred to as a purge. So it will purge between different colors at every color change, and it can do the prime tower. I typically don't do that. I let the purge go into the infill, or I make sure that there's enough purge that it switches just in doing the little doodle. It evacuates out of the back, there are already files out there on Thingiverse and printables that you can download to make small catches or catchers or waste bins. Um, so check those out. Uh, but in our experience doing these hearts, I came back the next day and saw on the ground a whole bunch of red, white, and pinkish as it was switching uh, doodles on the ground. So uh, nothing new there, just so that you know that's how it does it. Let's talk about thermals. The actively heated chamber can stay up to 60 degrees Celsius. That's gonna help a lot with more difficult filaments. Being able to maintain a specific temperature in your chamber will allow you to dial in just the perfect settings for that carbon fiber, for that ASA, for the PET G, for anything that you need to do. In terms of the nozzle, we can go up to 350 degrees Celsius. Again, great for those more difficult filaments. And then the heated bed can go up to 120 degrees Celsius. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's talk about the bed for a second. The bed is a spring steel PEI powder coated type bed. 
It's really nice. You can take it right off and the item will release easily. If you let it cool, the item usually releases by itself, but it holds the parts very well while it's printing. The hot end is no slouch either. It has a high flow, 80 watt, all steel hot end, which allows the filament to flow at 40 millimeters cubed per second. So pushing out that filament, the high speed filament or normal filament is no problem for this printer. The unit comes with two cameras built in. There's a camera in the chamber that points down at the bed, which allows for remote viewing and any detection of, let's say, spaghetti or errors, it can alert you. The hot end also has its own AI camera built in that can check out the initial layer lines and make sure that you're getting good extrusion from the start. That first layer is still important and the AI camera on the hot end unit will make sure that it's a great first layer and you have proper bed adhesion from the get-go. One of the things I noticed on this printer was there really wasn't any belt tensioning that you had to do. There's an active belt tensioning system in this printer that allows the printer to keep the right amount of grip or force and tension on the different axes so that it's always kind of adjusting as you're printing. I think that's great uh, because back in the day, you had to make sure your belts were tensioned and there were little knobs on the side or you had to release an Allen screw and pull something and tighten it. Printers nowadays are coming with much more sophisticated and useful options for keeping those belts tensioned. Let's talk connectivity. This printer, as we become accustomed to, does have Wi-Fi. It can connect to the Creality Cloud or you can connect to it directly through your local network using the Creality Slicer app. Cool thing about this printer is that it does have dual band Wi-Fi, so 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So depending on where you're placing your printer, you may go for more speed or for a longer distance, depending on which one of those bands you're using. Also, in terms of connectivity, you have a USB port on the side, so you can always load files the old fashioned way through a thumb drive. The color touchscreen makes it very easy to interface and find the files you need. I personally like being able to send the file over from the slicer and then activate it here. You can do that either from the slicer to start printing or you can walk over to the machine. A lot of times with different colors and different color changes, I like to make sure that I have the colors that I think I have in there. Now, that being said, another feature of this is that if you have RFID compatible filaments, it can read that RFID tag and automatically put the specifications for that filament into the slicer. This is really handy, and I think we're gonna see more and more printers going this way in the future. And I think Inland, over time, will also adopt some RFID technology so that our filament can also be recognized in these printers. If you're not interested in using the CFS and just wanna use a single roll on the outside, the combo does come with an external spool holder. Now, if you get just the normal one, that's gonna be your best bet for loading filament. Also, if you need to load a filament that doesn't work so well through these multicolor assemblies such as TPU, you'll definitely wanna load that directly uh, and utilize the external spool holder. A couple of other features that we've become accustomed to are power loss recovery. If your power goes out while this is printing, it'll have just enough energy to take note of where it was and be able to resume whenever the power comes back on. This also has automatic filament switching. So if you have the same color or you have filaments that you wanna use up, it can switch from one to the other when it detects that it's out of one of the four. That's pretty cool. The other thing that it has that a lot of newer printers are coming with is active filtration. So there are active fans on the back of the unit which pull air through the printer. This also helps in keeping the chamber cooled or heated depending on where you're trying to get it. But that feature is really great for just your local environment so that you're not pumping things out that you might not want to be breathing in. Let's talk speed. So even though it's a bigger printer, we've still got modern day speeds at 600 millimeters per second max. Now it's not always gonna do that. Different layers wanna go slower so they adhere better. Uh, different things like the infill and the walls might be different speeds, but you can go up to 600 millimeters per second. Now the acceleration can be up to 30,000 millimeters per second squared. So it's not a slouch. So let's talk size. 
Going all the way back to the Ender 3 series, we were sitting at about 220 by 220 millimeters, right? So we could print some decent sized stuff. The K1 Max came in at 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. I guess I could just say 300 millimeters uh, cubed. Now, the K2 Plus comes in at a whopping 350 by 350 by 350 millimeters. So I believe it's their largest enclosed printer to date and it's their first printer to include the CFS, their multi-color solution. And Micro Center will also have a new Creality printer coming soon called the High Combo. This is an open frame bed slinger that can utilize the same CFS. Um, what's cool about that is that if you wanted to have a little bit of a farm, you wouldn't necessarily have to have uh, a whole bunch of K2 pluses. You could have a couple of High Combos utilize the CFS units and link them together if you needed more than four colors at any one time. So we really like that Creality is doing a deep dive into multicolor and we're excited to see where they go with it. All right, let's talk about a couple of first prints we did. The first thing I wanted to do was, you know, test the multicolor and the filament switching. So I printed a heart box uh, with uh, my buddy's name on it and it went between red and white all the way up. Uh, it took mm, maybe about two hours and 12 minutes, not too bad. And it came out really nice. That was the very first print. Um, didn't run a Benchy, didn't run any other test prints. Basically loaded the filament and ran with it. Now for the second one, I tried to reduce the time by having it produce less color switches. And the way I did that was I printed it face down. So to get Dorothy, my other buddy's name, on here, uh, it only had to do maybe two or three color switches versus all of these. Um, this was the very second print and also came out great. Uh, no issues there. Um, pretty happy with it right out of the box. All right, so we're really excited for the bigger bed volume. And now we could print something massive and large to show you how well it prints. But I think another spin on having a larger bed is that you can fit more of an item onto it, especially bigger items. So right now we're working on a project where we're building using these three inch uh, full range speakers, uh, waveguide speakers. Once this finishes, what we'll have is the two waveguide enclosures, and then we'll have to print uh, the side panels as well. I think we might get creative with the side panels and do some multicolor stuff. So let's see how that comes out. All right, so we've got a little bit of electronics work to do, which we'll get to in a little bit, but we wanted to show you the four color print we did. We did a, let's call it a cow that looks like a mushroom themed print from a very popular game. Uh, and this will go on the side here. Now we've printed both left sides and on the bed right now, we're printing the first of the right sides. Uh, we'll take a deburring tool around the edge of this to clean it up. Uh, we'll wire up some of the electronics and utilize these speakers. And we'll give it a test out. We're really happy with the quality of the print. And we had a lot of fun putting together this project and doing something useful with 3D printing. We're selling this printer already, both the single unit and the combo with the CFS. We'll have parts coming in for it soon as well, including different nozzles and additional CFS units so you can buy more to link them together. If you're looking for just the single unit, you'll find it around $12.99. And if you're looking for the unit with the CFS included, you're gonna find it at $14.99.99. So make sure to check your local Micro Center's webpage first for stock availability. We hope you've enjoyed this look at the Creality K2 Plus with the CFS. So we're so excited to have Creality in the universe of multicolor printing with us now. We can't wait to see what you do with this larger build size and up to 16 colors. As always, make sure to stop into your local micro center and talk to one of our 3D champions. They're the experts on this stuff and they can help you get all set up. We can't wait to see what you do. Make sure to leave a comment below on what you think of the new Creality K2 Plus, and we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.